Now at five, we learn more about the Good Samaritans who helped in trying to save lives during a house fire in Parsons, Kansas. Plus a huge chunk of Wyoming's Teton Pass collapses. What that means for tourists headed to Yellowstone this summer. And mastering the green for a good cause. A golf tournament in Joplin looks to help benefit an area hospital. The four states most watched news starts now. Parsons Police Department is recognizing the efforts of Good Samaritans following a fatal house fire last Wednesday. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Tanya Bach. The fire claimed the life of a mother and her 18-month-old daughter. Authorities say numerous Good Samaritans took action during the event, helping to assist victims even before the fire. EMS and police arrived. They believe roughly 10 people helped during the event, assisting in helping to get victims out of the burning home. The biggest thing I could tell them is that how much and how grateful that we at the police department that they were there and that they could help this family. And while it still ended up being a tragedy with the two deaths, we still have, you know, the, the remaining people. And to me, that's important that they stepped up and helped. The Parsons Police Department says they are still investigating the fire, including its cause. And you can learn more about the Good Samaritans efforts tonight on KOAM News at 6. Four state golfers raise money for children battling disease. Storms postponed the Freeman Health System Tournament of Miracles last week, so it teed off today instead at Twin Hills Golf and Country Club in Joplin. The 18-hole four-person golf scramble raises money for Children's Miracle Network hospitals at Freeman Health System. To get out here and through this partnership, you know, we're making miracles happen and with the help of our community partners, we're going to continue to make miracles for our local children here for a long time. This is the 32nd year Freeman has hosted the Tournament of Miracles. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us now with a first look at weather. Well, it was a really nice day today. We do have uh, some temperatures in the low 80s, so we got a little bit warmer today. Now, nice breeze out of the northeast. It is going to shift tonight, and we're going to have a southerly breeze moving in, driving these temperatures up from the low 80s to the upper 80s and even the 90s in the next several days. So across the region today, 78 in Lamar, 79 in Pittsburgh, 85 in Independence and Nowata. A little bit warmer in the southwestern counties, but overall looking pretty good. We still have a flood advisory for Vernon County that stays in effect until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And still a couple of the rivers in our area are flooded as well. So be mindful of that when you're making your way about. But we're going to stay dry for the next several days, and I'll have more details for you in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. A road collapse is causing major problems in Wyoming at the start of the summer tourist season. From June through September, roughly 12,000 people use Highway 22 each day to reach destinations like Yellowstone National Park. All that remains now is an 80 foot drop that plummets into the valley below. Transportation officials say the mountainside had been shifting for decades at about a quarter inch a year. But when large cracks reappeared immediately after repairs, they knew a collapse was inevitable. Uh, it was moving about six inches an hour. And sometime during the night, between Friday night, Saturday morning, it had uh, catastrophic failure. Thankfully, no one was injured. It's unclear when the highway will reopen, and even just surveying the damage could take weeks. While officials look for some short-term relief options, Traveling through the mountainous region could take up to three times as long. Hunter Biden's fate is now in the hands of a Delaware jury. Both sides made their last attempts to sway opinions in closing arguments today. The first son will not testify in his own defense. He's charged with three felonies connected with a gun purchase back in 2018. Prosecutors say he lied about his illegal drug use and addiction on a drug on a gun purchase form. The defense has argued he did not knowingly lie, but rather did not believe he was an addict at the time. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has returned to the Middle East to urge leaders in the region to pressure Hamas to accept a ceasefire proposal. It comes days after a special operation by Israel that led to the release of four hostages. Natalie Brand has details from Washington. 
In his eighth trip to the region since the war in Gaza began, Secretary of State Antony Blinken delivered this message. If you want a ceasefire, press Hamas to say yes. The Biden administration says it's up to Hamas to accept a phased deal to halt fighting and release the remaining hostages. The diplomatic push comes two days after an Israeli mission rescued four hostages taken from the Nova Music Festival on October 7th. Noah Argamani is now reunited with her father and her mother, who is dying of cancer. Almog Mayer's loved one celebrated his return just in time for his mother's birthday. I couldn't stop hugging him. I couldn't stop. So I got my present. An emotion overcame Andre Kostov as he saw his family for the first time in eight months. CBS News spoke to his brother Dimitri. He, he's uh, totally healthy. He's joking, he's laughing. The Hamas-run health ministry says nearly 300 Palestinians were killed in the operation and subsequent fighting. Israel disputes that number. The rising death toll is adding to the political pressure on the Biden administration for a ceasefire. We don't want our tax dollars being used to slaughter innocent civilians. Protesters formed a red line in front of the White House this weekend saying the bloodshed must stop. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. A member, a member of Hamas's political win told CBS News on Monday that the group was still reviewing the most recent proposal for a ceasefire and could have an answer today or tomorrow. Still ahead, beating the bank. Home insurance rates are on the rise, but there are ways to lower those premiums. I'm Christine Lazar, and I'll tell you what they are. And next in Health Watch, how movie sets are becoming more inclusive with actors living with autism. Topping today's Health Watch, doctors say they're getting closer to understanding Parkinson's disease. Scientists from the University of Dundee say they found a molecular switch in the brain that helps protect people from the disease. The hope is it could one day lead to drugs that benefit patients. Parkinson's is the fastest growing brain disorder in the world with no effective treatments to slow the condition. The new Hollywood film Ezra has big name stars like Robert De Niro and Bobby Cannavale and a teenage actor who has something in common with his character. He's living with autism. Bradley Blackburn shows us how the film's producers work to make their set more inclusive and how other workplaces might learn from it. He could order himself a ice tea. The film Ezra tells the story of a young boy with autism spectrum disorder and the journey it begins for his entire family. Bobby Cannavale and Rose Byrne play his divorced parents and the star... Not a cameo. And a title role. <laughs> title role. 15-year-old <laughs> William Fitzgerald. If this does get nominated for an Oscar, I might be too overwhelmed to attend. I might just... I'm going to just say hi via Zoom meeting. That's my, that's my plan. Director Tony Goldwyn cast William after a nationwide search, determined to find a neurodivergent actor to bring this story to the screen. I wanted the autism community to see this movie and be like, yep, you guys got it right. William has been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, or ASD, and ADHD. It was a priority to make the set a comfortable space. His parents, David and Laura Fitzgerald, worked closely with the crew. They had training for the cast and crew. They always had a quiet room on set, so if William needed to take a break, he could step aside and just have a quiet place to regroup. The CDC says more than 5 million adults in the U.S. have ASD. By some estimates, their unemployment rate is 85 percent. Making workplaces and hiring more inclusive can help open doors to people ready to contribute. So what made you want to get into acting? I thought it would be fun. William may share a diagnosis with his character, but their personalities are very different. It's like the opposite of me. He doesn't like hugs. All I know is I gave hugs every two minutes to the cast. A movie that embraced William, showing everyone what's possible. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Ezra also hired a neurodivergent producer and crew members to work behind the scenes. We're learning new details about how the brain works when we have to make an important decision. Researchers at New York University tested human brain activity while navigating a maze on a computer. 
They found when we plan something, the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus actually create a mental simulation visualizing different options, and that helps us make important decisions. Aging in the body increases even if the brain only thinks we're overeating. A study of animals found that even if their diet hadn't changed at all, when cells in the brain were given information that the animal was overeating, their internal organs showed more signs of aging. The study authors say this could help them understand how brain processes could lengthen or shorten a person's lifespan. And that's a look at today's health news. A little later with home insurance rates on the rise, we've got tips to help you find affordable rates. And weather's looking pretty good this week, but I'll have more details right after the break. Well, after this past weekend, it looks like we're out of severe weather season. Now, that does lead us into a lot warmer temperatures, humidity to deal with for the summer months. Taking a look outside of Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. Really gorgeous day today. We weren't too warm because we did have a nice frontal boundary pass on Saturday, so it cooled us off for the next couple of days. And we've had a lot of rainfall as well, so we have a flood warning that was in effect until this morning, but a flood watch still remains in effect in Vernon County until tomorrow morning. Outside of that, we're looking pretty good. We're going to stay dry all week long and temperatures are going to start to climb up into the 90s. Now, we're completely out of a drought in all of our counties. However, as we move into the summer months with limited amount of rainfall and very high temperatures, especially with low humidity values as well, it does cause some concern that we could go back into a drought, so we'll keep an eye on that. But humidity levels across the region today, pretty low, less than 40%, 28% in Commerce, Chitopa 27%, a little bit more, Nevada 44%. But when we're in low humidity values like this, now we are still pretty saturated from all the rain. We do have some concern for fire weather, but as we move into the rest of the week and temperatures do warm up, humidity values do go back up. So we're going to be pretty humid and warm in the next couple of days. It does not start tonight though. We're dropping down to the lower 60s, upper 50s for our low and clouds do start to increase and we're going to have a pretty cloudy day tomorrow. Outside of that, it's going to look pretty good for the rest of the week. So this is Tuesday morning pretty cloudy got overcast conditions because we do have some rain north and south of us but we're not going to see any rainfall we've got enough space in between both of those events that we're going to stay dry then we've got a nice long ridge that forms over most of western u.s and that's going to stay like that most of the week we've got a chance for rain moving in on friday night but the likelihood that we really see a lot of rain not so much this week and since we are getting into these summer months, be mindful of effects of heat and humidity. Humidity makes it feel a lot warmer than it is. So when we get into those 90 degree temperatures later this week and humidity values drive up, we do see that it starts to feel like that heat uh, feels like we're in the hundreds, but right now we're still only 80 to 90 degrees, so not too bad. But like I said, low value, low, low temperatures getting down into the 70s starting Thursday, 90s starting Thursday as well. And we stay in the 90s. We don't see a lot of rain chances until next week. We may see a little rain chance on Friday night, but during the daytime, it's going to be mostly sunny every day and we get to be the mid 90s by Sunday. So be mindful of that when you're planning outdoor events. It's going to be pretty hot this week. All right, well, I'd have to say it's summertime, we need to get used to the heat, but honestly, could you just get it out of the 90s for us? <laughs> I, will, I will work my magic. I'll we'll see what I can do. <laughs> I know, I know you don't have a say in it, but man, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get there. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Yeah. Well, coming up, Kansas lawmakers take steps to address rising property taxes. Topping today's Consumer Watch, home insurance rates have skyrocketed in the past few years and people living in areas at higher risk of fires and hurricanes are being hit the hardest. Christine Lazar has tips on how to find affordable coverage. Like most Americans, Gaurav Barjawaj is dealing with inflation. Everything is going up. 
That includes the insurance on a 1,600 square foot house. Nationwide, home insurance rates are up nearly 38 percent since 2019, according to Lending Tree. But it's much more in some states. Barduage lives in Southern California, where his rates just skyrocketed 200 percent. Even if I stop around, I may be able to save like four, five, ten bucks a month. Uh, but like, it's going to be a hassle. So I think I have to live with that. I see people paying anywhere from five, six thousand dollars, where it used to be fifteen hundred or two thousand. Carl Sussman is an independent insurance broker. He says you can cut your premium if you're able to live with a high deductible. Well, don't just say I'll go from five hundred to a thousand. Look to go from a thousand to five thousand, even ten thousand if you can. And even though that seems like a lot, keep in mind if there's a large claim that you have, your home burns to the ground, for example, $10,000 is probably not going to make or break you being able to rebuild your home. Homeowners should also take a closer look at their policy. Personal property, that's your stuff in the house. If you look at that number and you say, I don't have that much personal property, then you can reach out to the carrier or your broker and say, let's lower that down. And some homeowners are going a step further. You have a leak right now but you're not going to file an insurance claim. I am not filing an insurance claim. Eric Brooks' insurance costs more than his property tax, and he's worried a claim would only increase it. I couldn't imagine any more than this. Some insurance companies will lower monthly payments if you make upgrades like a security system, storm windows, or a fire sprinkler system. Christine Lazar, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, Kansas is among a handful of states taking steps to limit or cut rising property taxes as home values dramatically increase. Colorado, Alabama and Wyoming have new laws that limit the rise in tax assessed values for homeowners. Now, Colorado also has a ballot proposal that could cap the growth of property tax revenue. Nebraska and Kansas will hold special legislative sessions to address property tax relief. And Georgia voters will decide in November if increases in assessed home values should be limited. Well, Tesla's eighth biggest shareholder, Norway's Wealth Fund, says it will vote against approving CEO Elon Musk's $56 billion pay package. Shareholders are set to vote on the package this week. A Delaware judge invalidated it earlier this year. Well, there's another run on many tote bags at Trader Joe's, this time for an insulated version. The grocery store chain quickly sold out of many canvas bags selling for $2.99. Many coolers are a dollar more. The bags are selling on resale sites for substantially more. A final check of your forecast is next. Up next on CBS Evening News, a roller derby team is caught up in a legislative effort to ban transgender athletes from women's sports. And then on KOAM News at 6, we learn more about the efforts of Good Samaritans to rescue a Parsons family from a house fire. Plus, Ascension via Christie Hospital in Pittsburgh gives an update following a ransomware attack on its systems. And several Southeast Kansas wrestlers are taking part in the USA National Wrestling Duels to represent the state. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then KOAM News at 6. Well, it is rodeo season and we all love watching the excitement in the arena as long as it stays in the arena. On Saturday, the crowd at the 84th Sisters Rodeo in Oregon was singing along with Lee Greenwood's God Bless the USA as the bull ran around the arena before what was to be the final bull ride of the night. And then the bull decided to hop the fence. Ooh, the bull ran through the concession area into the parking lot, injuring at least three people before Wranglers caught up with it. Ouch. Wow, <laughs> that is something you don't see every day. No one was seriously hurt though, so that's, that's good. good. Yes, that is good. All right, final check of the forecast. Well, it's gonna be pretty sunny, dry all week long. I mean, we don't see rain until next week. Uh, temperatures are also climbing into the 90s and the lows in the 70s. So it's going to be a pretty hot week. So you're saying I should mow my grass and then let it die. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us. CBS Evening News is next. And of course, we'll be right back here for KOAM News at 6. And we'll see you then. Have a great evening and an even better tomorrow.